Hi there, I am now walking uh, on a path uh, from 1776. Well, actually the path is probably much older than that, but uh, they found a map dated 1776 and uh, this path is on that map. It uh, connects two of the... Hold on, I think there's ice here. <laughs> it connects two of the major uh, old farms uh, in this area here in southeastern Norway and I am now in a nature reserve actually and I'll show you why um, I, I was saddened to see that uh, yet again uh, my woodland not my woodland but the woodland that I uh, where I was making my videos. It was destroyed uh, a few days ago <clears throat> and so I'm going to walk off the path because we were here this this weekend and uh, we didn't have snow then but I know that there is ice uh, on, on the path there so I'll walk around the ice. Um, yeah the woodland was destroyed so I'm in search of a new woodland um, and I'm thinking like you know a nature reserve would be perfect uh, because they can't come and destroy that. Uh, now uh, this woodland here I think it's called the Iron Valley. Can you see all the dead trees? Can you see those trees? Uh, 14 years ago there was a big fire here on this hill and all around me you have these dead trees standing there fir trees mostly and, and the woodland or sorry, the, the hill here um, with these dead trees, it is surrounded by ancient woodland actually. Uh, some of the big trees, they are up to 300 years old. So what I'm hoping is that I can find somewhere or a few places here where I can come and make my videos and uh, you know, I always connect with nature and, and the the place, you know, so I would rather not have to go through that grief and an emotional and all those emotions, you know, when when your local woodland is destroyed. I'm going to uh, have a campfire and uh, some chocolate coffee. I'm going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about knives, bushcraft knives because I find that interesting and um, I have some physical issues actually, nothing serious <laughs> but some physical or a physical issue that is forcing me to to reconsider my choices when it comes to bushcraft knives and I've brought three knives and I'll talk a little bit about that. Let's walk down the hill here and uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find some of those old trees. So now I'm in the spruce forest <clears throat> and I'm right at the edge of, uh, of the nature reserve. It's a very small nature reserve and uh, I can't remember actually if, if I'm allowed to even have a, a fire in here. No, uh, in the firebox, so it it would be enclosed and totally safe. But I, I really want to, you know, follow the rules. So I'm not going to have a. Uh, here's a creek, or there will be a creek here uh, in a few weeks' time, I guess. So um, yeah, so I'm going to move outside just at the edge here um, across a uh, 
across the path. So it's, uh, it's very slippery and it's difficult to see where the ice is because it's under, under the snow. But now we have this very steep hill here, right in front of me here. And there's a sign here with a photo of a reconstructed hill fortress. Can you see that? <laughs> um, it doesn't look like that up here right now. What people would do is they would build some kind of stronghold where the locals could, could come in case there were bad people coming. And they were typically on a hill like this steep hill here. And uh, today you can, it, it's, you know, they, most of those stones that they piled like in a, in a like uh, to build up, up there to build a fortress, they, they've been removed. I think, now I might be wrong, but I think that this is the site of the fortress. Now again, you'll have to excuse me if I'm wrong, but, uh, and obviously the, <laughs> the, um, the shelter is a modern, uh, modern thing. Someone's been here and built a, uh, what do you call that, a lean-to? But this is actually, I think, the site of a uh, hill fortress overlooking the surrounding landscape. Uh, I don't think there's been people here for some time. Or maybe someone's been here and left the firewood there. I imagine staying up here to be safe because you've heard that there are bad people coming. Raiders perhaps. And, and the whole community, you know, the whole, and your whole tribe is here. Um, and you've piled big rocks up in front here and maybe surrounding where I'm standing now. You have long spears and you're ready to, to fight to the death because you have no choice. I, I think, I think that, I think it wasn't really that warlike all of the time, at least not all of the time, but I think people, they, maybe they gathered in their fortresses, their hill fortresses, because they didn't know if there were people coming and they didn't know those people. Maybe did they, you know, they sent, uh, at least the women and children and the old people and maybe their animals up on the hill uh, until they were sure if there were the traders coming or people with bad intentions. So it's, um, it is fascinating uh, to visit these old places and, and to imagine what it was like. I do that a lot. The forest used to look much different back in those those days. We didn't have as many spruce trees, for instance. But, uh, but speaking of spruce trees, let's walk down there to the spruce forest and uh, and uh, have our campfire.
So I'm going to cut a piece of wood that will serve as a, uh, a table uh, for the firebox because I plan to come back here. I like it here. I like the big trees and I know it's not going to last forever. We will cut down these trees as well, but um, I'll see which which rules apply when it comes to having a, a contained fire within the nature reserve. And I'll probably, if I can have a contained fire there, I'll probably move up there. Okay. Yeah, I can spot a good candidate there. To all the people who commented on my video about the deforestation on, on, my, on my main channel and said that you have to cut down the trees uh, because it's necessary. That's rubbish. Uh, what happens in you know, the natural cycle of life is that when spruce trees, in this case spruce trees, when they get very old, very big, eventually this happens and the wind, oh, here's actually, actually, <laughs> here's what I need, this one, I don't even have to cut, cut it off the tree, they've done it for me, so I'll take that with me, <clears throat> I'll just check if there are any little bugs here, Dormant. No, I think we're okay. I'll put that piece of bark back on the tree. <clears throat> yeah, well, as I was saying, uh, when these old giants, when they fall over, it creates this, creates, sorry, <laughs> getting difficult to speak here in the cold. Uh, these spaces, as you can see right here in front of me, <clears throat> and <coughs> then you have young trees. We have one over here, that will grow in and, and fill the space, so to speak, you know. Uh, and there is one over there, and uh, and you get the competition between these trees, right? So um, that's how it's supposed to be, you know. And uh, yeah, but let's let's get the fire uh, started. <laughs>
Okay, so some of you have uh, heard about uh, three tool rule or something like that. You have your saw and your axe and, and your knife. Okay, you'll, you'll have to excuse me if I have uh, either ice or coffee foam in my moustache or maybe both. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's how it is sometimes. <clears throat> I brought three knives with me today uh, just to illustrate um, my, my point, so to speak. Um, I brought <clears throat> the Mura Bushcraft that I just used. Um, I brought um, <laughs> a Finnish, very traditional, I would say, a puko, the boar. The boar head uh, is made out of bronze, it's very cool. Maybe you saw that in my one of my other videos. Um, and um, <laughs> I brought uh, uh, a tops, what's it called? Fieldcraft. The, the Brothers of Bushcraft, and it has a, a, a dent here for uh, making fire using the fire, using the bow drill method, which I, I, I really like using that method, and uh, I, I always thought that I, it would be cool to have a, um, a handle with, a, uh, with that kind of dent that you, you need. You know, of course you can make it, but, but anyway. Um, I would say that these are all great knives, but um, I believe that the most important part of your knife is the handle. And when I bought this now recently, I've only used it once, you know, <laughs> and I won't use it much because I have um, something going on with my hands. Um, it's uh, this uh, tendon here is too short in both my hands. It comes from decades of uh, heavy lifting, uh, especially the deadlift. Uh, I suppose that's you know you, know, you grip the bar, and I'm not doing deadlift like the you know the um, I'm not I'm not doing the what I call fake deadlift like you see in the strongman shows and all that, uh, where you use wraps. So this this tendon here has become short, which has begun to become a problem because traditional Scandinavian knives are narrow at this this part here in the handle. And when I put my hold the knife, uh, it it's very uncomfortable now. So I'm probably not going to use knives with that kind of handle. That's why I, let's see here, I much prefer this one, a uh, much cheaper knife, but it's, I mean, the Mura Bushcraft is a great knife. It's just well made and it will do the job. The only downside to it is, of course, that it's, it's very generic and it's all plastic and rubber, but the handle is, I think, the best handle that I've had on any knife, and it's much wider here, which fits my my hand better. So this is probably the knife I'm going to use uh, most of the time from now on. <clears throat> now, the Mura Bushcraft comes in a uh, plasticky sheath. It has a diamond sharpening stone here and a ferro rod, so it has all you need, everything you need, you know. This is quite coarse, so you won't get a fine, you know, really, really razor sharp edge, but it's, you know, it's, I guess, in a survival situation, it's, it's, it's good to have. Um, it's stainless, which I prefer because of the climate where I live. And I put a, 
and now I've attached it on a dangle like this. So now wh why do we Scandinavians always use these belt danglers, you may ask. Well, it's because we use jackets that are longer because of the climate. Again, it's cold here. <laughs> so uh, it now will hang under, you know, it, it protrudes beneath my jacket, right? Uh, so it, it won't snag or whatever on my jacket. Now, the American knife, <clears throat> hold on. Uh, it's a, it's a Scandi grind, which which is great for for bushcraft, you know. Um, it's a very heavy knife. It's full tang. The other two knives are not full tang, and I used to be of the opinion that my knives need to be full tang, but I've since changed my opinion. Um, I haven't used it yet, but the handle is quite comfortable for my hand. I hate it when the handle is too short. This handle is 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 okay, you know. Um, and uh, I really like the size and the look of this knife. It has one major flaw, though. It's it it comes with. Um, hold on. The sheath has a ferro rod. <clears throat> And you're supposed to use this part here, which I hate. And I, I have removed the paint, but I just hate that. It doesn't work. It's not sharp enough, and that's a major flaw. Now, I would like to use this, you know, this part here, of the blade. So I'll have to grind off the paint and sharpen. The edges here to a 90 degree uh, sharp uh, edge here. So that's a major flaw and the uh, tops please correct this it's it's not good you know it's and, am I doing something wrong? But for me you know even using this part is is unsafe I don't like it. No I'm not going to use the edge not even the tip of the edge I don't like that. <laughs> okay So, the handle, again, you know, and I've said it before, it is the most important part of the knife. Um, now, Mura should pay me <laughs> for saying this, but they make really good knives. They, they, they do, you know. Uh, I don't like that they're always, you know, it's always plastic, but the rubbery handle here really... You know, it's it's. You won't slip, even when your hand is wet. You won't slip. I like also to have a finger guard, and I know there are people out there saying that if you know what you're doing, you don't need a finger guard. Well, I disagree because I've learned one thing. Well, hopefully more more than one thing, but at least one thing I've learned after all these years as a hiker and a bushcrafter. I, I've learned that. I will make mistakes and I make mistakes you know in situations where I'm typically far away from people for instance you wake up it's all dark in, in you know in the morning uh, and you you need your knife I want to be able to feel where I'm holding my knife you know without seeing it you know so I uh, a handle that you know won't tell you if you're holding like this or like this. I don't like that so much.
Can you hear that? The silence. Leave nothing but uh, footprints and take nothing but memories. <laughs> I've taken some uh, some dead branches and I've made uh, a seat here, as you can see. A bit of promotion there from my website. If you are not already a subscriber to this channel, please consider subscribing. And uh, there should be um, popping up a, uh, uh, a video or a link to a video on the end screen here now. So you could consider clicking on that. That would greatly help the channel. Okay, it's, that's all for now. <laughs> Getting uh, difficult to speak here because of the cold, uh, cold weather. But we are getting warmer weather now again, actually. So, but anyway, have a wonderful day. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.